Welcome to Workshops on the Web, presented by the Ventura County Superior Court. My name is Joanne Johnson, and I'm the Family Law Facilitator for the Ventura County Superior Court, and this is the initial dissolution workshop. In this workshop, you will learn how to start or respond to an action for divorce, legal separation, or annulment. The first part of this program covers procedure. In the second part, you will learn how to properly fill out your forms. If you are married and wish to terminate your marriage or legally separate from your spouse, you must open a case in the Superior Court in the county in which you or your spouse live. You do this by filing a summons, petition, and other supporting documents and having these documents served on your spouse. If you have been served with papers, you should file a response if you do not agree with what has been requested in the petition. The first step in starting your case is to decide what type of case to file. If you want to be divorced, you will file a dissolution of marriage. In California, dissolutions, or divorce, are no fault. This means that differences have arisen between you and your spouse, which cannot be resolved. If you and your spouse are working well together, or your spouse does not respond, the entire process can be completed without going to court at all. At the end, you will receive a final judgment of dissolution of marriage. The judgment will have orders to divide up your property and debts, for spousal support if appropriate, and for child custody and support if you have minor children with your spouse. There is a residency requirement to file for dissolution. You or your spouse must have lived in the state of California for six months and the county of Ventura for three months before you can file for dissolution. If you have not met the residence requirements, you may start with legal separation and amend to dissolution later on. There is also a six-month waiting period before your marital status can be terminated. This time is counted from the day the summons and petition are served, not the day the case is filed. It is the earliest date you can be divorced. You may request a final judgment before this date, but you will not be single until six months and one day from the date of the service. If you have not turned in the final judgment papers, you will not automatically be divorced on that day. You must turn in more papers to be divorced. You may request a legal separation from your spouse if you do not want to be divorced. This means you remain legally married but are no longer financially tied to your spouse. A legal separation is very similar to dissolution. It is no fault, can be done on paperwork alone, and will result in a final judgment, just the same as a dissolution, however you will not be free to remarry. If you later decide you want a divorce, you will have to file a new case for dissolution only. Unlike a dissolution, there is no residency requirement to file for legal separation. A third type of action that may be filed is an annulment. Unlike dissolution or legal separation, this is a fault-based action and you will have to go to court to prove why your marriage should be annulled. The fact that you have been married only a very short time is not grounds for an annulment. If you believe you have grounds for an annulment, you should speak with an attorney or the family law facilitator at the court. You can find additional information on this subject by clicking on the icon in the text to the right of this video screen. You should pause the video to read the additional information. The person starting the case is the petitioner. The petitioner will complete the summons, petition, declaration for court assignment, and, if there are minor children of this marriage, a UCCJEA declaration. All of these forms will be discussed in detail later in the workshop. The petitioner will file the original and two copies of these forms with the clerk in the filing office. The clerk will stamp or conform the copies and return them to the petitioner. A filing fee must be paid at the time the documents are filed. The fees do change periodically, so check with the clerk before filing. If you receive public assistance or are low income, you may submit a fee waiver to have your fees waived at the time of filing. After filing, a confirmed copy of the documents is served on the respondent along with the blank response. You do not need to serve the fee waiver. If the respondent lives in California, service must be done personally. This means that an adult, not the petitioner, must personally hand the papers to the respondent. The respondent does not have to sign or accept the papers. 
If the respondent will not take them, the server may drop them on the ground in front of the respondent. However, the server cannot leave them on the door, in a mailbox, or give them to another person. If you do not have a friend or family member who will serve, you may hire a process server or the sheriff. The server must complete a proof of service, which is then filed with the clerk. If the respondent does not live in the state, service may be by certified mail, return receipt requested, restricted delivery. The petitioner may not do the mailing. If you do not know where the respondent is, speak with an attorney or the family law facilitator for assistance. Service of the petition is very important. If it is not done correctly or the proof of service form is not filed, you may not be able to get your final judgment. If you have been served, you are the respondent and may file a response to the petition. If there are minor children, you will also complete the UCC JEA declaration. These forms will be discussed in detail later in the workshop. If you do not agree with what is in the petition, you should serve and file the response within 30 days of being served. If 30 days pass, you can still file a response until the petitioner files a default against you. If you agree with what is in the petition, you do not need to file a response. The petitioner will be responsible for submitting all the remaining paperwork to complete the case. If you are not sure if you should file a response, speak with an attorney or the family law facilitator. The response is served before it is filed. Service can be personally or by regular first class mail. A copy of the response is mailed or given to the petitioner by an adult, not the respondent. The server completes a proof of service which is then filed along with the original response and a copy of both. Filing fees must be paid at the time the documents are filed. The fees do change periodically, so check with the clerk before filing. If you receive public assistance or are low income, you may submit a fee waiver to have your fees waived at the time of filing. Now that you know how to start your case, you should understand the procedure for resolving your case. It can be much easier than you think. There are four ways in which you may obtain your final judgment of dissolution or legal separation. True default, default with agreement, uncontested, or contested. If you are requesting an annulment, the procedures are different as you will need to go to court. Also, if the respondent is in the military, there are special protections for service members, so speak with an attorney or the family law facilitator. True default. The respondent does not file anything. The petitioner is solely responsible for completing all the forms, and the judgment must match the petition. For example, if the petitioner requests joint custody and no spousal support, the default judgment cannot change to sole custody and order spousal support. In a true default, the court must divide the property and debts equally, make custody visitation orders, and guideline child support orders if there are minor children. Default with agreement. The respondent does not file a response, however the parties reach an agreement on all issues. This agreement is written into a marital settlement agreement. The agreement does not have to match the petition, the respondent does not have to pay the filing fee, and the parties control the final resolution of their case. The respondent's signature on the agreement must be notarized. Uncontested. The respondent has filed a response, however the parties have an agreement on all issues. The parties prepare a marital settlement agreement resolving their entire case. The respondent's signature does not need to be notarized. Contested. The respondent has filed a response, but the parties do not have an agreement. The court will decide all unresolved issues at trial. The family law facilitator can help you request a trial date. In all of the cases, except the true default, both parties must complete and serve a declaration of disclosure before the final judgment can be entered. In a true default, only the petitioner serves the Declaration of Disclosure. These forms can be obtained from the court's website, 
the clerk's office, or the family law facilitator. This includes a fill-in-the-blank marital settlement agreement. There are additional workshops on these topics. If you are ready, you may fill out the forms now. All the forms for the petitioner and respondent are discussed here. You may fill out forms during the presentation. The forms may be accessed by clicking on the icon next to the form name or number. If your computer has a capability, you may fill out the forms right on the screen, or you may print out the forms and fill them out by hand. You will not be able to save your forms from this program, and you may need to pause the video as you fill out the forms. Forms packets may also be obtained from the clerk or the family law facilitator. During the workshop, additional information on some subjects can be found by clicking on the icon in the text to the right of this video screen. You should pause the video to read the additional information, as it is not covered in the video. The forms may be typed or filled out neatly by hand. It is best to use black ink. Almost all of the forms have a caption on the first page in which you will write your name, address, telephone number, the court address, the names of the parties, and the case number. The subsequent pages also have a bar at the top to write in the names of the parties and the case number. The address you use should be a mailing address where you can receive documents and notices from the other party or the court. If you move, you must file a change of address with the court. This must also be served on the other party. If there is a domestic violence restraining order filed, which protects you from your spouse, and your spouse does not know where you live, you should not put that address on any of the court forms. Declaration for Court Assignment, VN 027. This form is completed by the petitioner only. This is a local form which is used to designate which branch of the court your case will be located. If you live in the East County area, you will be assigned to the Simi Valley Courthouse. Otherwise, the case will be assigned to Ventura. Look at the list of zip codes on the form. If you do not see the zip code for your residence, you are assigned to Ventura. If you do see your zip code, check the box for that zip code and check the East County boxes. Complete the caption on the form. Check the courthouse to which you are assigned. Check the family law box on the list of actions. At the bottom of the form, you need to print your name and address, date, and sign. This address must be a residence that allows you to file in Ventura County. It does not have to be your mailing address. This may also be your spouse's address if he or she lives in Ventura County, but you do not. Summons, FL-110. This is a state form and is completed by the petitioner only. This form advises the respondent that a case has been opened and that he or she has 30 calendar days after being served to file a response. At the top, after notice to respondent, print your spouse's name. After petitioner's name is, print your name. At number one on the bottom of the form, write in the court's address. At number two, Write in your name, address, and telephone number. Do not date the form. Read the back of the form before you file it. There are standard family law restraining orders that apply to both parties while the case is pending. Petition, FL-100, or Response, FL-120. These are state forms and are almost identical, so they will be discussed together. These forms tell the court and the other party what the issues are in your case. It is important that they be filled out correctly. Complete the caption on the form. Check the box next to the type of case you are requesting, dissolution, legal separation, or annulment. If you are filling out a response, you do not have to agree to any of the actions, and you may leave those boxes blank. Complete the remainder of the form item by item. The response does not have to match the petition. Number one, residence. 
Check the box if you or your spouse have lived in the state for six months and the county for three months. This only applies to dissolutions. Number two, statistical facts. Write in your date of marriage, date of separation, and the time between those two dates. The date of separation is the date you or your spouse decided to no longer remain in the marriage and action was taken to convey this intent to the other party. If you are no longer residing together, the date of separation is usually the date one of you moved out. If you are still residing together, this would be the date it was decided that you would not remain married and you took some action to physically separate within the home. This date is important as this is the date the court uses to determine your length of marriage and decide if assets or debts are community or separate. Minor children. Check box A if you do not have minor children with this spouse. Check box B if you have minor children with this spouse who are adopted or biologically yours with your spouse. Write in the names, birth dates, ages, and sex of each minor child. Do not include stepchildren. Number four, separate property. Separate property is any asset or debt you acquired before you married, after you separated, or anything you acquired by gift or inheritance at any time. Some assets are part separate and part community and would be listed on both the separate and community section of your form. A common example is a pension. If part of the pension was acquired before marriage, it would be listed on the separate property section at number four. If part of it was acquired after marriage, it would also be listed in the community property section at number five. In this section, you will list any assets or debts that are separate and state who they belong to. You may attach a separate list if there is not enough room. This is not where you divide up your community property. On the back of the form at number five, you will list your community property. Community property is any asset or debt that was acquired by the parties during the marriage, not by gift or inheritance. The assets are owned equally by the parties and the debts are owed equally by the parties. At 5A, if you have nothing owned or owed with your spouse, you may check box A. If you have assets or debts with your spouse, list them at 5B. You only need to list the items, not divide them between you and your spouse at this time. You may attach a page if there is not enough room. Do not list values or account numbers. You may be general in your descriptions. For example, furniture, furnishings and appliances, credit cards, pensions. If you have complicated property issues, you may need to hire an expert, an attorney, or seek professional assistance with determining the values and character of your property. For the respondents only, you have two different options not available to the petitioner at number six and number seven on the response. If you believe you are not married to the petitioner, check box six. If you do not agree with what the petitioner has stated at number six on the petition, check box seven. At number six and number eight, the documents again become the same. At number six, petition, or number eight, response, check either A, dissolution of marriage for irreconcilable differences, or B, legal separation for irreconcilable differences, or at C or D, the grounds for your annulment request. At number seven or number nine on the response, check the box under the appropriate column for each issue which applies to your case. A, legal custody. This is the right and responsibility to make decisions for the minor children. If you want to share in the decision making, check joint. If you want to be the only one who makes all the decisions, check the box under your column. B, physical custody. This addresses how often the children see each parent. If you want the children to spend time with both of you frequently, check joint. If only one of you will have the children in his or her primary care, check the box for that party. C, visitation. If you did not check joint for physical custody and you want the parent who does not have custody to spend time with the children, Check the box for the parent who will have visitation. 
D, determination of parentage. This only applies if you have children born before the marriage, but the father was not on the birth certificate. E, attorney's fees and costs. You do not need to check this box if you do not have an attorney, or you may ask the other party to pay in the event you retain an attorney. F, spousal support. If you want to receive spousal support, you must request it here. If you do not request it, you may not be able to get it later without amending your paperwork. G. Terminate spousal support. If you do not want to pay spousal support, check this box. H. If you listed property in number 5 above, check this box. If you did not list any property at number 5 above, do not check this box. I. If you want your former name restored, check this box and write in the name. You cannot request that your spouse take back a former name. J. If any other issue has not been covered by the form, check this box and write in the issue. However, do not include child support. There is no place to ask for child support in the petition or response because the court must make orders for child support if you have minor children. If you do not have an agreement with the other parent, child support will be by guideline. You can make an agreement to a non-guideline order, but child support can never be waived. In California, child support is paid until the child is 18, or if a full-time high school student, 19, or graduation, whichever comes first. At the bottom of the form, date, print your name, and sign. If you have minor children with your spouse, you must also complete a Uniform Child Custody and Jurisdiction Declaration, FL-105. The purpose of this form is to determine if the court has jurisdiction, the power, to make orders regarding your children. You must provide residence information for the children, as well as any information on existing or pending custody cases. Do not include support actions if there are no custody orders. Complete the caption. At number three, write in the number of minor children you have with your spouse. For each minor child, write in the name, where the child was born, birth date, and sex. You must then list where the child resides now, how long, and with whom. You must cover the last five years or birth, whichever is less. If you have more than one child, and all the children have resided in the same place, you can state that the residence information is the same for the additional children. If you have more than two children, you will need to attach a page listing the additional children and their information. On the back of the form, at number four and number five, Provide information about any existing custody orders or any pending custody cases. At number six, provide information on any restraining orders in effect. At number seven, if someone other than you or your spouse has custody of the children, provide that information here. Date, print your name, and sign. Congratulations, you have completed all of the forms necessary to start or respond in your case. You should also prepare the proof of service so that you will have it ready for your server. The proof of service for the petition is different than for the response. For the petition, the proof of service is the FL-115. It is to be used for verifying service of the petition and related documents on the respondent. This form will be completed by the server when the petitioner's filed documents are given to the respondent. You should fill out some of the form before the service. Complete the caption. Check number 1A. If you have minor children, also check 1E1 because you will have the UCCJEA declaration served also. Your server will then complete the rest of the form with the location, date, and time of service, as well as provide his or her own name, address, and telephone number.
Your server must then sign and date the document and return the completed proof of service to you. You must file the completed proof of service with the clerk. Be sure to keep a copy. For the respondent, the proof of service is the VN120. This form is to be used to verify service of the response on the petitioner. This form will be completed by the server when the respondent's documents are served on the petitioner before they are filed. You should fill out some of the form before the service. Complete the caption. Check the box for response and, if you have minor children, the UCC JEA declaration. Your server will then complete the rest of the form with the location, date, time, and method of service, as well as provide his or her own name, address, and telephone number. Your server must then sign and date the form and return the form to you. If service is by mail, it does not have to be certified for the response. The original response and proof of service, along with a copy of both, are then filed with the clerk. This is only the first step in your case. Additional documents must be completed by the petitioner and any respondent who wishes to enter into the case by filing a response or having an agreement with the petitioner. You may obtain form packets for the declaration of disclosure and the final judgment from the clerk, the court's website, or the family law facilitator. If you need to get orders for support or custody while this matter is pending, you may file an order to show cause to get a court date for temporary orders. You may obtain these forms from the clerk, the website, the family law facilitator, or workshops on the web. This concludes the initial dissolution video workshop. This workshop was designed to provide basic information to help you help yourself if you are not represented by an attorney. It is not intended to replace in-depth legal advice specific to your situation which can only be obtained from an attorney.